Bonjour! Buenos dias! Magandang umaga! Buongiorno! Guten Morgen! Yeah, welcome to my Chamber of Chakras and thank you for joining me on another episode of Astro Affirmation for April 17th, 2024. And it's the peak of the week! Oh yes! At the height of our hero's hike. I'm on the top of the world looking down on creation and the only explanation I can find is the love that I found ever since you've been around. Your love puts me at the top of the world. Wistful Wednesday peeps. Yes, feeling a bit melancholy about the perks of my past that I'm giving up for the greater I am that I am. Oh yeah, everybody zoom out. Zoom out of the picture and see a bird's eye view of your creation so far. Do you like what you see? Did you drop a stitch that you need to undo and fix? Or just maybe leave it alone and move on. Yeah, it is what it is, right? Have you ever heard of happy accidents? Yeah, I heard that from David Lynch, you know, David Lynch, <clears throat> the creator of Twin Peaks. Yeah, he would say that when things happen, like, you know, when you clap that thing, lights, camera, action. And then, you know, the actors start acting and then something happens that wasn't in the plan or part of the pattern. More often than not, mistakes make a more marvelous masterpiece. I love alliteration, don't you? I do it whenever I get a chance. Anyway, yeah, Wednesday is named after Woden the Norse god of eloquence and travel. In Spanish and Tagalog, Wednesday is Miércoles, named after the Roman god of communication and commerce. The energy of Wednesday is one of curiosity, experimentation, and intellectual stimulation. Yes, it vibes. The expression of the emotional tone that we set yesterday, right? I mean, Monday. Monday, we set the emotional tone. And then yesterday, Tuesday, we acted on it, right? Today, Wednesday, allow the spirit of Mercury to flow in being adaptable to changing situations as you talk about your thoughts, your ideas, your visions for the future, to internally stabilize the variability of life. You know what I'm saying, what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Although we come in many shapes, sizes, and forms, we are all experiencing this earthly existence together. No matter how diverse, our cultural backgrounds may be or different our behavioral patterns are we are one organism we are human and humans make mistakes but that's how we learn to be better than we were yesterday am i right yes we're not perfect but we can come close right we can come as close as we can to perfection jesus christ our lord and savior said in the gospel of matthew chapter 8 verse 48 be perfect as your heavenly father is perfect perfection is holiness i understand this as following god's plan for our lives the good and perfect will of God. Our Heavenly Father is talking to us through the Bible. 
He says in Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. Romans 12, 2 says, do not conform to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what the will of God is, that which is good, acceptable, and perfect. Make the most out of Wednesday by completing your transformation into the person you are created to be. Be whole, fully developed, and spiritually evolved into Christ consciousness. Okay, let's sing our theme song to put an exclamation mark after that. Amen. Amen. Here we go. We are one in the spirit. We are one in the Lord. We are one in the spirit. We are one in the Lord. And we pray that all unity may one day be restored. And they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love. Yes, they'll know. stanza on that song but thank you for singing with me I love it when you sing with me you have the most beautiful voice so now let's have a little coffee talk before we move on to the chakra um, of the day go on and grab your cup of whatever and let's spill some tea yeah so, my remaining brothers and I have a group text or chat, whatever you want to call it, have it going, you know. And I say remaining brothers because we lost the last of the Fab Four, five, Fab Five. Now we're the Fab Four. Yeah, we lost my baby brother, Alexis Penagoko, aka Catanic Panic. He passed away two years ago. So, anyway. My brother, the Nam, named our group text, If There Be Thorns, after V.C. Andrews' novel by the same title, If There Be Thorns. The group was first named Flowers in the Attic, and then we evolved into Petals in the Wind, and now it's If There Be Thorns. Yeah, so we are progressing as the legacy of Leonardo and Lourdes in our pursuit of perfection, right? So anyway, last night, my eldest brother, L texted a collage of photos of Lindsay Wagner's, you know, history in acting, right? From when she was bionic woman until today. It's like a collage of her photos, it's a beautiful lady. Anyway, she's turning 73 this year it said on the on the post and it reminded me of the time when my son Anthony Patrick Conley aka Ant the host of Ant's BBQ cookout on YouTube when he starred in a movie created by one of his colleagues at Valley College and the movie is entitled God Complex and I went to the screening I guess that's what you would call it you know first time showing it to the public 
but maybe like a movie premiere of some sort. But I was front and center, you know, in this little theater on campus. And of course, you know, I'd be like up at the front because I'm the mother, right? Anyway, as after the film ended, as everyone stood up to leave, I turned around and who do I see at the back of the room? Lindsay Wagner, the bionic woman herself. Oh yeah, just as gorgeous as she's ever been. Yeah, my brothers and I were all fans of hers. We watched her show every week, the bionic woman. But anyway, back to that time when I saw her, right? When I looked and saw her there, it's like our eyes locked. Yeah, for some strange reason, we made eye contact. And the distance between us, because she's in the back of the room, I'm in the front, disappeared. It's like, as if we were the only ones there. Yeah, it was that kind of connection. It was spiritual, let me tell you. Somehow, we ended up face to face and we had a conversation, yeah. It turns out that she's a teacher there, training students on acting and directing. Yes, I will never forget that moment as long as I live, even after. Because no matter how starstruck I was on, that, on the inside, I spoke with her like I've known her forever. Like we were friends, you know? Like ordinary people. Yes. I remember I felt so proud, you know. I felt so good showing her my son, you know. I'm like, and how he was the main character in the film. And I gave her a hug, because I'm a hugger. As we said goodbye, nice meeting you, you know, etc. And then she just kind of floated away like an angel and disappeared in the crowd. I was like, is this real life? It was like I died and went to heaven and back. My heart was fibrillating and the star shock brought me back to life. <laughs> I'll be 63 and she'll be 73 this year. How cool is that? She's my older sister from another mister. I love you, Lynn. <laughs> So enough chit chat and talk about the ruling chakra of the day, shall we? Yes, let's move on. As you can see, I'm wearing bright orange, right? So what does that tell you? Yes, correcto mundo, the color of the sacral chakra. The second chakra of our core in these last two days of airy season, we are fired up to start this next astrological cycle. Yeah, Aries starts the zodiac wheel, right? And the waxing gibbous moon, right? The waxing gibbous moon in Leo has us passionate about loving ourselves and others, right? We are here for the long haul. So stay focused on reaching your goal to be the truest of who you are in any given situation from a place of love and compassion, of course. You dig? Uh-huh, closer to the borderline, uh-huh, closer to the borderline. That's from a Billy Joel song called Close to the Borderline from his Grammy Award winning album, Glass Houses. Holla, I love you, Billy. Yes, Mission High graduating class of 1980. That album, album was my Bible. Yes, played it on repeat on my close and play phonograph. Oh yeah, I'm old. Anywho, back to topic. The sacral chakra. 
is the creative energy sphere in the central column of light that runs up and down our spine, right? I'm wearing bright orange, right? My headband and my blouse, the scallop sleeve blouse. I crochet these to myself to match. Yes, my bright orange press on nails, right? Yes, tiger's eye bracelets and earrings. Tiger's eye is associated with the sacral chakra and connected to the root and solar plexus chakra. Let's see, this is how it's up close, right? Tiger's eye. Here's another kind of square. -ish. Yeah, tiger's eye help balance the sacral chakra's emotional power mental stimulation and verve on the stage of life. It's located in the lower abdomen below the navel at the place of the woman's womb. The woman's womb is the most creative organ in humanity where our physical bodies were formed and developed into the people we are today, right? The symbol for the sacral chakra is a lotus flower with six petals. I have Happy Buddha here with us today to show you the quintessence of the sacral chakra's light energy. You see? Orange, the color of joy, fun, enthusiasm, enjoyment, optimism, prosperity, health, and beauty. Orange is also the color of transformation. I made Happy Buddha his beanie. I crocheted a beanie for him because he's bald, right? The man suggested it because the man is bald too, so he knows how it is. And then to top it, to make it fancy, I made this brim, which is the symbol for the sacral chakra. It's a six petaled lotus flower, right? Those six petals represent six blocks to the sacral chakra. They are negative energies that must be overcome to purify the sacral chakra. They are anger, jealousy, cruelty, hatred, hubris, and envy, or lust, you know? Let's first burn this Nagchampa incense, shall we? to clear our inner and outer space from negative energies. Oh yeah, can you smell it? Jai Guru Deva Om Father, Son, Holy Spirit Shine your heavenly light upon us and dispel the darkness in our soul so that we can worship you in spirit and in truth. Purify our chakras. Cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen. Yeah, have like a little altar of abundance here for my happy Buddha. Like, you know, when you have change in your pockets, just put them in here, okay? Just to symbolize abundance. And then I also have picked some orange flowers that's been blooming in my backyard. Look at these trumpet flowers, right? Yeah, I had to ask permission first. I always ask permission before I cut flowers or trees. But look how lovely, right? 
It's so orange, bright orange. Birds of paradise and trumpery flowers. Okay, let's put it here next to Happy Buddha. And if it stays in the shoe, it looks like it might fall. So I'm just going to put it here on this table. Can you see it? Yeah. Okay, so the symbol here on my chakra shawl, bring it a little closer, right? It shows concentric circles in the circle of consciousness. And those concentric circles, if you can see, forms a crescent moon in the middle right? Yeah. In addition, each of the six petals have a moon phase, okay, like here, starting with a new moon, waxing to a full moon, okay? We're at this stage right now, waxing gibbous, and then from a full moon, waning to a new moon, and then the cycle starts back up again. It's the moon cycle, the lunar cycle. Yes, because the moon, the crescent moon specifically, is a symbol for the sacral chakra as well. And that crescent moon there in the center is like a baby cradle, right? Like the endometrium inside the uterus of mom when we were in there, our original home where we lived for nine months. But the sacral chakra is where we hold our passion and longing, right? The element of the sacral chakra is water as the moon affects the tides of the ocean and the water in our bodies. Our bodies are mostly made of water, right? So our internal condition, our internal like our emotions, our intuitions, our thoughts and feelings, right? <clears throat> but this is why I believe that the sacral chakra corresponds to the laver in Moses' tabernacle of God, described in the Old Testament of the Bible. Look, see my chakra chart here? I superimposed the illustration of the tabernacle of God that was built by Moses. Okay, God instructed Moses to build this tabernacle of God. It's a mobile one where they can fold it up and like take with them because they were nomads, right? Anyway, I corresponded the seven primary chakras of our core in the central column of light in our core. Those seven spinning spheres of energy that makes up that you know, that, um, that beam of light that runs up and down our spine, right? The saber thing in, in um, Star Wars, right? The gate of the tabernacle and the altar of sacrifice would be the root chakra. And then the labor is the sacral, the menorah, is the solar plexus because light, right? Solar plexus. The heart chakra would be the sacred heart of Jesus because Jesus is in the middle of it all. Yeah, Jesus Christ, the son of God, who paid the price and sacrifice, right? To bring heaven on earth, right? And then the throat chakra would be the showbread, right? The word of God to spread the good news, right? And then the third eye would be the altar of incense where we pray and meditate, worship God, right? And then the crown would be the Ark of the Covenant, the mercy seat where we connect to God to receive grace and mercy and forgiveness. Yeah. I believe that our ethereal body, the seven primary chakras of our core, is the true tabernacle of God is inside of each and every one of us yeah and what a perfect day Wednesday to put the power of the sacral chakra to work 
right? Express yourself. Hey, 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 hey. Don't go for second best, baby. Put your love to the test. You know, you know, you got to make him express how he feels. And maybe then you'll know your love is real. Express yourself. You got to make him express himself. Hey, 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 hey. So if you want it right now, make him show you how. Express what he's got. Oh, baby, ready or not. Express yourself. That's my girl, Madonna. Hello. Yes, the sacral chakra is the spinning sphere of energy in our spine that gives us the sense of pleasure, sensuality, and sexuality. Oh, yeah, it's my favorite chakra of all. A healthy sacral chakra, one that is pure, clear, open, and aligned, connects us easily to others. Yeah, we make connections easily with other people. So if your, your sacral chakra may be blocked and unbalanced if you feel consumed by your emotions, or if you're experiencing like bipolarity, extreme highs and lows, or if you're using escapism to avoid life or showing unrequited obsessive affection for someone and engaging in inappropriate sexual behaviors, your sacral chakra might be blocked. So you need to clear that by meditating Wash yourself in the labor of water of the sacral chakra to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Chant the mantra for the sacral chakra. See? Vam. The hand position is one hand cupped over the other. Like you're cradling a baby, right? Hold it right there below the navel at the lower abdomen and chant that. Vum at the exhale, okay? That sound vibration, vum, feel it. Feel it in your mouth, your tongue, your throat, all over your body, vum, just like penetrating and infusing all the cells in your body, every fiber of your being, right? Can you chant that? Vum, it cleanses the sacral chakra from harmful sexuality, you know, um, dangerous desires, right? And poisonous pleasure. The frequency of the sacral chakra is in tune with the sound of flowing water. Imagine the sound of flowing water, okay? The frequency of the sacral chakra is in tune with that, okay? And then chanting vam is said to activate the sacral chakra. It can remove blockages and bad habits while opening the mind to accept change, okay? So here at the top of the week, confront your fears. Take that leap of faith and make that change. Look at what you have become so far. See where you've been, where you are, and where you're going. Make wise decisions on which path to take to reach your destination and accomplish the mission you came here on earth for. Take the path of least resistance. Know thyself. Know your true, authentic self and take the next step to where you want to go from here. Okay? You hear me? Okay. Here are some Bible passages to reflect on today. Jesus Christ tells us in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 6, verses 19 through 21, 
do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moths and vermin destroy and where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moths and vermin do not destroy and thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Romans 12, 9 through 13 says, Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in love. Honor one another above yourselves. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor. Serving the Lord, be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Share with the Lord's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. And then in Colossians 3.23, it says, Whatever you do, work heartily as for the Lord and not for men. 1 Corinthians 9.24-27 through 27 says, Do you not know that in a race all the runners run, but only one gets the prize? Run in such a way as to get the prize. Everyone who competes in the games goes into strict training. They do it to get a crown that will not last, but we do it to get a crown that will last forever. Therefore, I do not run like someone running aimlessly. I do not fight like a boxer beating the air. No, I strike a blow to my body and make it a slave to me so that after I have preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified for the prize. That's all I have for you today. And once again, I honor God in you and me. Namaste.